please hit that subscribe button. Hey everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup this season. If you are new to the channel, Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked on any scores, and we're live. Hey everybody. So today I want to talk about the Colorado Avalanche and their salary cap situation because one thing that you hear a lot when talking about NHL teams and the salary cap and all of that is that the Colorado Avalanche have a lot of cap space and they have money to work with. And that is true on face value when you look at the you know different teams and how much space they have. Colorado has the fourth most cap space in the league right now, according to Cap Friendly, with $5.4 million unused in salary cap. However, when you really delve into it, Colorado does not have as much cap space as they, you would think looking at it face value. And we're going to talk about why that is and really what the cap situation is in Colorado in this video. Now, before we start, I just ask that you please hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already, as those things really, really help out the channel and are very much appreciated. But let's get into it here. Looking at the Colorado Avalanche's salary cap situation, like I said, according to Cap Friendly, right now they have the fourth most most cap space in the league and by far the most cap space among you know contending Stanley Cup level teams they have 5.4 million available against uh, under the salary cap however when you delve into it a, li uh, a little bit and look at their roster and look at the contract situations they have that cap space right now but they have a ton of of restricted free agents and unrestricted free agents that they are going to have to sign or let go uh, before next season. So they have some big name RFAs. Uh, Andre Burakovsky is a restricted free agent. Tyson Jost is a restricted free agent. Valerie Nishushkin, who had a very nice year for them this year, is a restricted free agent. Vladislav Kamenev is a restricted free agent. Uh, on the back end, Nikita Zadorov and Ryan Graves are both restricted free agents this year. Kale McCarr is a restricted free agent after next season. You know he's going to get a massive raise. And, um, you know, they've got a bunch of UFAs as well. Uh, Colin Wilson's contract is up after this year. I think he's probably going to be someone that they let go. Uh, Mark Barbario and Kevin Connaughton, two uh, depth defensemen for them. Both unrestricted free agents uh, at the end of this season. They're probably going to be let go as well. or at, One of them at least will be. Um, and Matt Nieto and Vladislav Nemesnikov. Nemesnikov, who they just picked up at the trade deadline for a playoff run this year. Uh, he's a UFA at the end of this year as well. So at face value, yes, Colorado has a lot of cap space and they have money to work with. They've got $5.4 million under the cap. They've got much of their core signed long term. You know, McKinnon signed long term. Landis Gog's got a few more years on his deal. They just signed Miko Rantanen. You know, the, the, a lot, you know, these big name players, these big important players. Eric Johnson's on the cap for another f three years. Uh, these big players for them are signed. However, um, they've, they've got a lot of, of work to do still. Joe Sackick, the GM, still has a lot of work to do. And they don't really have that much money to play with when you look at it. Because Tyson Jost, coming off his ELC, is looking for a big raise for next season. You know, he's going to get a significant raise over the $885,000 that he was making. You know, he's going to probably bump that up a couple million. Uh, Andre Burakovsky making 3.25 million. He's probably going to get a slight raise, maybe up to the 4 million range. Uh, if they want to keep Vlad Nemesnikov, that's going to be 3 million uh, or somewhere around there. Matt Nieto is someone they probably let go at this point, but again, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Nikita Zadorov, now he was making 3.2 million. He's probably going to get another contract in that similar range. Um, I, he's a depth defenseman. He's a good depth defenseman, but he's a depth defenseman. So maybe not a huge raise there. However, Ryan Graves is certainly going to get a raise over the 735000 that he made this past season. He's an RFA at 24 years old and had a massive, massive year with them this year. And it's breakout defensive season for Graves this year, he's going to get a significant raise. So, you know, just between Ryan Graves and Tyson Jost getting significant raises, um, that's going to cut into that cap space pretty hard. Um, 
And then, you know, obviously you've got you know, decisions to make as far as depth players who are UFAs. Do they keep Nemesnikov? Do they let him go? Uh, Nieto, the same thing. Barbario and Kanaten, who are kind of like number six, seven type defensemen. You know, obviously you need depth on the back end, but do you go with a younger player or maybe on an ELC? Or do you, you know, keep a vet two veteran guys like that around? I mean... This is not an e this isn't easy for Joe Sackick. And I think that's the big thing that I wanted to make a point of in this video is that this is not easy for Joe Sackick. Um, just because at face value they have a decent amount of cap space doesn't mean that, you know, they can just keep everybody. And he's going to have to make a decision. Do we do we focus on signing these younger players, these RFAs who many of them are going to get raises? Do we make sure that we get those signed and then kind of, you know, maybe the older guys have to go? Or do we have to balance that out with some, you know, some group of veteran players here who we keep? Um, and obviously, you know, you need those veteran guys in your locker room. You need some veteran guys on the team. But do they maybe go with some cheaper options for veteran guys? Maybe guys that they can get on you know, towards the end of their careers that they can get on cheap deals like one year, one million or one year, 1.5 million, something like that. There's still a lot of decisions to be made here by um, Joe Sackick and the Colorado Avalanche management team. This is this isn't going to be an easy you know off season for them because they do have a lot of work to do. So I just want to talk about that a little bit because we hear it all the time about how much cap space Colorado has and how they're this really, really good team, but they've still got all this cap space. Like they've got they've got all this money to work with to make the team even better. And they do have money to work with. Five point four million in cap space is not a anything to, you know, to just look away from. Like that's a decent amount of cap space. But when you really delve into it and look at who they have to re-sign, look at all the number of players that they have to re-sign or decide to let go, when you start doing the math, that 5.4 isn't gonna last very long. They're gonna be using a significant portion of that to sign re-sign RFAs this season. So at the end of the day, um, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done in Colorado as far as building that team and building that roster. And we'll see what Joe Sackick does as the GM. I trust, I mean, he's built a very good team there. I trust him fully to make good decisions. Uh, I think he's a very good GM. And I'm glad that Colorado didn't give up on him early when they were, you know, going through that rebuild phase. Because you can't, you know, you're not going to rebuild a team. It's very unlikely that you're going to rebuild a team in one or two years. It's a process. But if you give the GM time to do it and get it right, you know, we, we get what we see now with Colorado where they're one of the best teams in the league and they have all this young firepower and this really good young core and a good mix of veteran guys in there as well, like Nazem Kadri and Ian Cole and, and guys who bring that leadership to the to the locker room as well. So I think Sackick's done a great job in Colorado. I think he's going to continue to do a great job in Colorado. Um, I just want to make a point that while we hear it all the time about how much cap space they have, when it comes down to it, it's really not as much as you think because they do have so many players to sign and re-sign. But with that, I, uh, that's going to do it for this one. Like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description below. If you'd like to further support the channel, links to our Patreon and merchandise store are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.